Okay, which ones uh, from 2.1 would you like to work on together? Jacob? Um, One number nineteen. Okay, so the, way, the equation y equals 2x plus 3 uh, represents the cost of y in dollars of mailing a package that weighs x pounds, okay? Um, well, it's, it doesn't quite explain why this is the equation for mailing a package, but we've written many stories about these equations. Can you guys come up with a story that makes sense about a package being shipped and why it would be y equals 2x plus 3? tells us that y is dollars and x is pounds, since x is pounds, what would make sense, what story would make sense for this equation if it's about shipping a box? in your homework, be writing these things down in your notes as you work through them. Continue to think about what story would make sense because I'm going to keep waiting until someone, even if they're wrong, and it's perfectly fine to be wrong, okay, just work on it and get more right. story. So the important things there that, that we have a $2 per pound charge, right? That's what would make sense if, if X is pounds, X pounds, right? Then to turn pounds into dollars, we need to multiply by a rate that turns pounds into dollars, right? So we cancel the pound units, and we need dollars, so we need dollars per pound, $2 per pound specifically, plus $3 for some unknown reason. Taxes, or just it just costs three dollars for the the person to gas them. I don't know. The, the person who's who's working there just costs three dollars for them to stand there for that long and process your package. I don't know. It, you know, whatever. That's a perfectly good story. Two dollars per pound. That's definitely what's going on here. Definitely costs two dollars per pound. 
but it definitely is three dollars additional. We just don't know why there's three dollars additional exactly. There we go. That's why it's two x plus three. Let me graph the equation. Okay. How much does it cost for a zero pound package? Three dollars. That is that easiest to find point on the y-axis that we call the y-intercept. Zero, three zero pounds costs three dollars. Okay, I don't know who's mailing zero pound packages, but I guess they're out there. There should be helium delivery boxes or something. Um, so there we go, three dollars for a zero pound package. And this is a, a kind of a nice rate because it's a two dollars for one pound as opposed to you know three dollars for five pounds. It's not a fraction, or if it is a fraction, it's over one, right? So I just go over to one pound. If I have a one pound package, how many more dollars do I have to add on? Two, two more dollars. Two more dollars to the three dollars gets us to a total of five dollars. I don't need to, but if I were to go over another pound, how many more dollars would I add on then? Two. Two, two more, right? We're starting to see the slope again, the rate of change, the change in y over the change in x that we talked about yesterday. Okay, And if it's half a pound, we would add on a dollar. right? We see all of these in between as we draw this straight line. And when I draw this straight line, what am I drawing? Infinite points. What do you think about these points? Anything that makes sense about those points in this particular situation? Okay. Well, you'd still be paying some money here, but eventually, yeah, they start paying you. Ship what kind of a package? Uh, negative. A negative package or negative weight. So if your package <laughs> floats, then you start making money, I guess. I don't know. This, of course, that doesn't make much sense in this situation. So we pay attention to this here. Um, graphed it, done. Use the graph to estimate how much it would cost to mail the package. The package is a package that is 1.126 pounds. Right? So it's 1.126. That's a, that's a fragment of one, 26,000. So one and an eighth pounds, right? How do we use this graph to estimate that cost? We go to about one and an eighth. We jump up here to the graph. Looks like it's going to cost about how much? Would you guess? Four. About um, seven. About five. A little shy. Of five dollars. Four dollars and fifty cents. Four dollars and seventy cents. Uh, what does it say here in my handy dandy teacher edition? Two point one. What are they shooting for? They say about five dollars. Okay, cost about five dollars. Um, last part. So about five dollars to ship a package that's one point one two six pounds. And lastly, use the equation to find exactly how much it costs to mail the package. How much does it cost exactly? How are we going to figure out by using the equation exactly how much it costs? Um, since x equals pounds, mm -hmm. we're going to place in 1.125 pounds for x. All right. It is a, there's a 6. 6x. Plus 3. You plug it in. Do the math. We find out exactly how much it costs. 2 times 1.126. Plus three more dollars. Five twenty-five. Oh, I 
graphs now to, to be a little bit bigger than five. 1.126 should have landed here because one pound is at five dollars. So this is not what we should have gone off of. So it's a little more than five. We find exactly that it is 525. Exactly. Screw it around. Questions about that? Questions? Anybody? No? All right, next page, next problem, uh, 21. Next page, here we go. Graph equation, use a graph calculator to check the graph. We could do this a couple different ways. But I would imagine probably we try to write it the way we've been seeing these equations with a slope and a y-intercept, right? We can use our skills from section 1.4 that's solving equations that have multiple variables. We solve for whatever variable we want. So we can make this equation look like this equation by doing what? What we do to this equation to get it look like the other one? It should. Good, so we'll solve for y. How do we do that? Great. Minus 5x on both sides. Good, minus 5x on both sides. 2y equals, let's say, negative 5x plus 4. And keep it in the same order as we used to. Ready? Divide 2 on both sides. Divide by 2. You've got to make it look like this equation on the previous page. You need to divide this by 2 and divide this by 2. So we get negative 5 halves x plus 4 divided by 2 is 2. So if we went this way, we could graph it by saying, if, uh, well, what's the easiest thing to plug in for x? Yeah. And we get 2. All right, so we get that point, that y-intercept at 0, 2. All right, what's the next easiest plug point, uh, number to plug in for x? One. That one. equation. 2 over 5. Uh, see, now 1 two. makes this a fraction. 2 over 5, x then two. is a fraction. 2, the number 2, is a whole number, right? And it will make a whole number out of 5 halves times 2. So we go over to 2, right? and I can just kind of see what's going to happen. The 2's are going to cancel. It's going to leave me with a negative 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from 2. 7. Subtract 5 from 2. Subtract, right? There's a negative there. Oh, negative, three. negative 3, right? We, get, we went over 2, and we went down 3, uh, down, sorry, 5. Down five. Can you just put a point at two and then go to the right two and down five? Absolutely, you can. If you forget, though, if you lose the understanding that what's really happening is I'm plugging a two into x because two is easier to plug in for x than one or three or five, right? Because it cancels out the denominator of two. Then, uh, if you lose that understanding, you'll not be better for it, it be worse for it. Any questions about that? Here's another little trick we could use. Um, use the equation the way it looked and plug in things and you know be clever about it. If we plug in zero for x, let's see what happens. What happens when we plug zero in for x? What's this? Zero. So what do we have? We have the equation 2y equals 4. If I solve for y in that case, 2y equals 4, what does y equal? Eight. Divide by 2, we get 2. Here's a thing you may or may not think of. How about if, since it looks the way that it does, I plug in 0 for y. Because right? then this goes away, and all we have is 5x equals 4. 5x equals 4, that's pretty quick to solve, isn't it? 5x equals 4, what's the solution to that equation? Four fifths. So we have uh, one of the points is the same as this one, it's zero, two. The other one we found is four fifths, comma, zero. Four fifths would put us right about there. We could graph it like that. Same line? Yeah, does this look like it goes through four fifths on the x axis? See, I'm such a good graphic of lines. Okay, here we go. Uh, Four. Do you have a hundred dollar 
close in your savings account and plan to deposit twelve fifty each month. Write the graph or linear equation that represents the balance in your account. So you have hundred dollars you're gonna deposit. Let me write this down. You have a hundred dollars and you're going to you know, deposit what? Twelve fifty a month. Month. And write an equation that'll give as its answer the balance of our savings account. Y equals 12.50 times x plus 100. Where x represents what? Once. Great, great equation. Following the story we were given. Uh, perfect. Um, ooh, this is a, this is an interesting question. How many months will it take? for you to have enough money to buy 10 acres of land on Mars. And here's the thing about Mars. You get 10 acres for $175. By the way, no one owns the moon. No one owns Mars. And so they have no right to sell you land on Mars or the moon. And so if you buy land on Mars, it's probably not going to hold up. It's actually an international statute says no country, no person owns other parts of the planet or the moon. So uh, don't buy it. <laughs> don't buy it. Anyway, if you were going to buy uh, 10 acres of land on Mars for $175, yes, it says that you're going to buy 10 acres. So how much money do we need to buy 10 acres? $175. $175. That's how much money we want to have. Okay. So should I plug 175 in for X? No. Why not? It's not months, it's money. Months, it's money. What is money in this equation? 100. Y. Yeah, 100 is money. But the variable Y also represents money. Right? Y represents the total amount that you have. So, Monica? 12.5. 12.5 is money per month. It's actually 12.5 is a rate, right? So, money, money per month. So what do we do with 175? Plug it in for y. 175 equals 12.5 x plus 100. And what do you reckon we do now? Subtract 100 from x. Solve it for x. Didn't even bother telling you that obvious thing. 75 equals 12.5 x. Kids? Divide by 12.5. You got it. Divide by 12.5. We are killing it. x equals whatever that is. Six. Six. Six, yeah, 12.5, double that, you get 25, and 25 goes into 75 three times, and that's two of those, so six in total. X equals six, what does that mean? Six months. Six months, we will have, which is enough to buy 10 acres on Mars, except for not really, because it's a scam. Okay. Well, isn't a lot of money? Yeah, they're 10 acres. Well, I mean, depending on the, our, our place in history, you know, in Oklahoma, they gave land away for free. Just gave it away. But it was way back in the day when they were trying to get people to like venture out from the East Coast all the way out to Oklahoma. And, you know, they want people to be there and grow things and produce and, and, and make commerce, right? So they gave land away for free. Uh, so, because it was undesirable. Now, it's not so undesirable. People live there and you want to Nobody lives on Mars. So the guy can sell 10 acres for $175 and more money than they would have otherwise. Uh, any questions? We're doing great. OK, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Two point two. Number nine. Here we go. So we've got this graph. Question being, if you find the slope of the line, and you find 
defining the slope of this line. Just a reminder, um, let's look at this guy right here. The slope of the line is re related to this equation, right, by this number 2, because in this uh, scenario, the equation y equals 2x plus 3 represented how much it cost to ship a package of x pounds. And the 2 represented what? In that story, what was the 2? Two? $2, $2 per pound. $2 per pound, right? So every pound gave you, every time you moved over one pound, what happened? You got, you added on, move over one pound, up $2. Up $2. Over one pound, up $2. Over one pound, up $2. Okay, now that makes sense in the story. Also, we can just look. Two and one over one up two, right? Okay. So over one and up two. Okay. Uh, look at this guy here. We got a negative five half. Well, if I if I think about what's really happening, right? This 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 graph is just a bunch of points. The points are solutions to the equation. I got this point from really plugging in two. And when 2 goes in there, 2 divides 2, we get 1 times negative 5, so we have negative 5. Right? So when you move over 2, we go down 5. If I were to move over another 2, I would go down another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from there. And I should have a point right about there, but my line's not quite straight enough. Straight enough, it would go right through there at 4 negative. Uh, So we can move to the right this much and up this much. Always right and up, right and up, right and up, right and up, right and up. If it's a negative, right? If I move up in a negative way, which way am I going? Down. down. So I go to the right two and I go up negative five, which means I go down five. Or I could go to the right negative two. Right? If you go to the right negative two, which means left and go up to positive 5, and there we go. So I can go to the right 2, down 5. I can go to the left 2, and up 5, depending on which way I'm going you know, on the line. So if we look at this line, what is the pattern? What, how are we moving over and up? What is the slope of this line? In the denominator, we see our amount that we're moving over to the right each time as we move down this line. And here in the numerator we have the amount we're moving up. All we have to figure out how much you're moving over, how much you're moving up. Johnny? Moving over five and going up negative two. So we're moving over five, remember that's in the denominator, remember, because that is the number that cancels hopefully with this x here, right? Right? And x is horizontal. Remember that. This is the number that you hope to cancel with x, and x is horizontal. So this is a horizontal move, right? Our graph is going to move this much horizontally. And we're going to move up how much, Johnny? I like the way you said it. Negative. Negative. Oh, well, from this point to this point, how much do we move? Vertically? Three. We move negative. Three, yeah? Alex? I'm kind of confused on how you do that. Well, I can just look at this this point here uh, and count over one, two, three, four, five. Right? That's how far over I have to get to this point. Okay. So I'm moving to the right five, moving positive. Right? And then from there, I could move vertically to get to the point. Well, to move vertically, I'd have to move down as opposed to up. Right? This is a negative slope I'm going down. We talked about that. This is what it would look like if the the cylinders that were filling with water were actually emptying of water because there was a hole in them, right? That's what the graph would look like. It would be going down. So it's moving right by the end, going down a three or up a negative three. So the slope is negative three fifths. That's the slope. Okay. Um, does that make sense? No, it was a little bit just put on the end of class last time. But if we have two points, and they're just right there on the graph, we'll figure out how to like actually calculate it today. But for now, we can just count it off, right? 
move over five, one, two, four, five, move down three, one, two, three, so I know I move down three, to the right five. I can say negative three fifths, I can negative three over five, I can say three over negative five, this is very rare, this is rarely as written. Uh, or I can say just negative the fraction three fifths. All the same thing. Negative divided by positive is what? A negative. So we have a negative number, a negative three fifths. Positive divided by negative is also a negative, negative three fifths. They're all the same thing. I say all that because sometimes people will ask, well, negative three fifths, does that mean negative goes to three or negative goes to five? The answer is either one. Either one we want it to go with. All right, any questions about uh, graphing with what we call slope intercept form? Okay, slope intercept form. For looking at a graph and finding the slope, just counting off the slope. Any questions about any of that? No? Okay. Then, let's see. Just a quick, quick question to you. See if you remember. This is supposed to look horizontal. What kind of slope does the horizontal line have? zero, right, because we look at, remember, it's the change in, that's delta, right, means change in y over change in x. The x changes some, but the y changes none. There's no vertical change at all, and zero divided by any number is zero. Now a vertical line, on the other hand, has what kind of a slope, Monica? Undefined slope, because if you look at these two things, the change in y, the change in y is something, but the change in x is nothing. And when you divide by zero, any number divided by zero is what we call undefined. There is no mathematical definition for dividing by zero. I don't know if I mentioned it to you or the other class or both, but if, if you could divide by zero, then it would be easy to show that one equals two, and if one equals two, then one equals anything, two equals anything, all of math is destroyed. So we just don't let zero divide things. It's a terrible, terrible thing to happen. All right. So you're going to graph a line for me and put everything away and show me a nice graph of a line. Get a piece of paper. You know what I'm talking about. Tell me something about how to graph this, Alex. Um, well, first of all, you could put zero where the x was. Well, put zero in where the x is, and that we can see gives two. 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 Okay, great. And Alex. Um, you could do four. Plug well. four. Yeah. And that equals negative one. It equals negative one, right? I know I'm going to cancel out the fours, and I'm going to get a minus three. Right, so I'm going to go over to 4 for x, and I'm just going to have to move down 3. Right? Every time I move over 4, I move, right, over 4, I move down 3. Right? If you do the math, 2 minus 3, 3 negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. If you follow the slope, you can just move over 4, over 4, right? That's the interaction between the 4 and this horizontal guy, x. Here we have two points. 4 down 3. Four down another three, over four down another three. Uh, lines are nice, their slopes stay the same all the time. Not all graphs do that. Right? The graph for this guy. Was it a straight line? No, it was kind of curvy for down here. And then it got straight right there, right? Yeah. Curvy down here, straight there. Okay. That's not something we need. Okay, so. Now, 
rather than, like we're gonna find the slope of a line, but rather than just count it off, we have a way to calculate it, right? So you should do with the numbers. So yeah, you should probably take this as an example after notes out, or as an example, and you already have had your notes out. Let's start with a simple example, like, hey, there is a point at 2, 3, and a point at whatever this is and whatever that is. Okay, with a point right there, we've got a line, and we're going to find the slope between There's those two points. So could you tell me what the slope of this line is? There's if you can determine what the slope is. Great. Is it 73? Or not, not 73. 76? So you're saying the slope is 7 sixths? Or no. 7 or 6 sevenths. Oh, 6 sevenths. Yeah. Okay, what did you do to figure that out? Over seven. So went over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's x and then which is our x change, our delta x. Up six. And you went up six to find the change in y. One, two, three, four, five, six. You got the vertical change, you got the horizontal change. Every time you move over seven, right? Like when you plug a seven in for x, then you move up six, and it cancels out that seven. You just move up six from there. Great, slope of six sevenths, that's correct. You go up six, you go over seven. But if I just told you, okay, that there's a point at, let's see, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a point at nine, nine. And there is a point at two, three. Count it off, but we can also calculate it, and this is useful especially when you don't have a graph in front of you, you don't have time to take time to draw the graph. It's useful when the numbers are kind of big and it would be kind of annoying to count off that much, right? I don't want to count over like 17 spaces. But given that we know where these points are, it shouldn't be too difficult to figure out how far apart they are from each other, don't you think? Right? Like if, uh, let's say I'm standing over here. Right, and Grady is, let's say, five feet from the wall, right? And say I'm, I don't know, 15 feet from the wall. That could be a really bad estimation. But if I, okay, I'm 20. If I'm 20 feet away from the wall and Grady is five feet away from the wall, could you figure out how far away from each other we are? How do you figure that out? Just subtract. If I want to know a distance between two things, I can just subtract how far they are from a common reference point. Well, as we said before, we have a vertical change to figure out. How can I figure out how much of a vertical change there is between this point and this point? Subtract what from what? X from X. So this is a vertical, right? Is this an X distance? This is a Y distance. So what do we subtract? Hey, we've got five minutes here. Don't count it up. Nine from three? Or three from nine. Three from nine. So if I just did my nine minus three, would that figure out how far it is from here to there? Well, this is nine. That's like when I was 20 feet away from the wall. This is three. That's like Grady being five feet from the oh, wall. Yeah. And if we just subtract, what do we get here? Six. Six. Yeah, we get that distance six. How about the uh, horizontal change? This horizontal change. So six. Seven. How'd you get seven? You got an x of nine minus two is seven. So six over seven. What about that? That's pretty cool. Do you think we can do that for any situation for any two points? I agree. In fact, I could just say, in general, here's a point, 
There's a point, okay? There's a line between them. There's a, is it supposed to be a line between them? You want to find the slope of that line? The slope is just a vertical change versus a horizontal change. A change in y, which is vertical, change in x, which is horizontal. So what are we going to need to do to figure out, say, how much vertical change there is? Subtract what? The y from the y. The y of this thing from the y of that thing. X from the x. So all we need to do is just kind of name this stuff so we have some references. Let's say this is point one and this is point two. Now what you call point one and two will not matter. It won't matter. Okay? Just gonna have to you try it out for yourself, try it both ways, but it's not gonna matter. So which one, whichever point you call one or two, it's not going to matter. The signs will all work themselves out. So this has an x and a y. And this has an x and a y. Right? This is the x and y of point two. That's why we call it x2 and y2. Because we're both from point two. Again, the choice of which point is point two doesn't matter. And which point is point one, it doesn't matter. Okay? So this is the x of point one. So we call it x1. This is the y of point one. We call it y1. So now we have some things to call stuff. So how do I find this vertical change? Okay. Um, y2 minus y1. You got it. Okay, now that's the vertical change. And I want to find the vertical change from one point to another, right? So if I call that y2, and I, or that point 2 over there, and I say y2 minus y1, that's going to tell me how far it is from here to there. It's very important that you keep the, the order intact. Because depending on which number is bigger, we may have a, a, a positive change or a negative change. Okay? And then we don't want to avoid negative changes, because that's what happens, that's what happens. In this case, we'll have a positive and a positive change, right? But the order that you do the subtraction will make the, the, the signs work out the way that they need to. Right? So I find the vertical change from point 1 to point 2, then I find the horizontal change from point 1 to point 2. So how do I find this distance right here? Like how far it is from the left to the right? How do I find that distance? Ready? Point two, or point, yeah, point two minus point one. Point, what about point two? The x. The x. The x of point two minus the x of point one. And there we have it. We call this the uh, slope formula. We call slope m. For a reason I don't happen to know why we call it m. But there we go. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the slope, as we've talked about before, is the rate of change. It's a measure of how slanty the line is. It's a measure of how fast things are changing in the whatever the story is, right? Like $2 per pound, it's kind of changing fast as opposed to you know, $5 for every four pounds. It's changing a little more slowly, okay? So make sure you keep the order the same. Pick your point one, pick your point two, but then you know, you follow this very strictly. The y of point two and the x of point two always come first. Yeah. What is the rest of those? Right, so just all the way up to 20. That's it.